Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you from Auckland, New Zealand. Auckland, New Zealand. It was here on the Hauraki Gulf, four of the world's top sailing nations. I think we commit to that right turn here, Ben. Yeah, copy, right turn. Britain. Really nice puff here. America. Jave, yeah. Stand by, Jave. Big push. Italy. Big guys to us, happy to press a little. Let's keep it in the bank here, Tommy. And New Zealand. Attack battled it out for the world's oldest international sporting trophy, the America's Cup. They say to win the old mug, you need the fastest boat, but the world had never seen yachts like this before. 75-foot monohulls designed to fly on water, hitting speeds of 50-plus knots. That's nearly 100 kilometres an hour. What makes the America's Cup special? Well, first of all, it's the most unpredictable sporting event there may be. American magic! My and goodness! They are over! Its lack of rules, in a way, makes it insane. Yeah, I think there's this rumor that we're holding information back. Can you send us the software of how it was designed and then we can work out what the problem is? You know, every other sport, the rules are down to the finest detail. Here, you, you win it and you get to start over if you want. It's incredible. That lack of rules creates an unpredictability that uh, just when you think you got it figured out, it, it goes 180 degrees in the other direction. I think that just creates this intrigue. It's almost not about the sailing. W what happens off the water is as or more uh, interesting as what happens on the water. Well, Dean's quite a bit older than me, so when he's as old school, maybe he'll just talk about himself. This is where heroes are made and history is written. I think the America's Cup is just it's a lot of history, isn't it? A lot of prestige. It's a sporting event unlike any other, where when you win it, you create the rules in a way that you sort of can't lose it. And we saw how, how good the Americans were at that for a very long period of time. And it wasn't until 83 when Australia won it that finally you could see it was possible to win it um, and not be the defender. At stake is a place in sporting folklore. It's the best people in the sport on the planet striving to achieve something which is almost unattainable. Not just the best sailors, but you know the best designers, the best innovators, the best thinkers, the best engineers, boat builders, collectively, you know, having to create this incredible group to achieve something that's so hard to achieve. The America's Cup is sailing's holy grail. For 170 years, it's provided intrigue, drama, and controversy in equal measure. I'm selling a cat. 
somebody else is selling a dog. <laughs> I think the question is, imagine if these guys lost from here. What an upset that would be. This, the 36th edition, didn't fail to disappoint. Oh, he's going to capsize. Whoa! Skidding sideways, skidding, skidding hard sideways. Oh, I rate this right up there. Right up there in the insanity meter. I see Emirates Team New Zealand. Touchdown, and Prada are sailing away in pressure. I think what the public see glimpses of, it's almost like a a venom off the water, you know? The, the, these teams don't like each other. What do they have is uh, nothing special. Hey, hey. You know, we do it, let our results do the talking on the water. That's all that counts. It's almost to the point of doing anything to win sometimes. Yeah, he does. He's clearing transom two, nice one now. But if there's a needle you can stick, you, you stick it. And, uh, and they're good at it. They hire people to do it. What, what sport hires people in order to, to uh, to be able to go just uh, to the other guy. So, um, yeah, no, this, this did not disappoint. After years of intense preparation, sacrifice, sweat, and tears, the best sailors, designers, brains, and muscles came to Auckland, New Zealand for one thing, the chance to hold the old mug aloft. Wow, have we gone a long way so far. It's just incredible. After winning the Cup in Bermuda in 2017, Emirates Team New Zealand, the defender, was the only team guaranteed a place in the final. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, Enios Team UK, and American Magic would have to fight it out in a challenger series, win the Prada Cup, then, and only then, could they claim the right to challenge New Zealand for sailing's holy grail. Emirates Team New Zealand! Well, the goal was obviously to win the America's Cup again for New Zealand. No one in this place was here to, to not achieve that goal, and you know, it was amazing to see how much um, you know, everyone kept pushing, everyone kept striving to, to make the boat better, to make those small improvements, um, to make sure we, we got there, and you know, we had a, a pretty incredible boat to, to be able to go and sail at, at the end. Two more round up after the mark. I mean, that's right, fellas. Yeah, look, I think the expectation that, that we all had was that, um, you know, we were obviously defending, but we were, I think, going in as much as challenges um, for this event. And I think that mindset of that it was never going to be easy, um, that we had to leave absolutely no stone unturned, was very much the philosophy right the way through the, the campaign. And really, as far as campaigns goes, it was pretty good at the end of the day. Like, there was not a lot that was left on the table, and I think from right the way through from the design, the engineering, the building, um, you know, even at the end, the sailing side of things, um, you know, we felt that, you know, we were getting better and better every day and finally got to utilise our weapon um, as best we possibly could at the end. And um, without doing any racing through the Challenger series, it was hard watching all the others get better and better. Two, three, 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 three. Go, go, go but ultimately knowing that we were spinning off on the sidelines, working on our own program, um, that eventually we could, we could utilise, um, you know, it was fantastic. The challenger of record, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, had to fight their way to the top. Getting the measure of the opposition was more of a learning cliff than curve. Ineos, for us, was a, a team with a lot of potentials, but with a lot of problems. A lot of time in the shed, and uh, a lot of time w when they were sailing, they were not uh, um, capitalizing a lot of hours in the water. It's going a bit further. Yeah, I think Charles, yeah, yours. A team with a very strong potential, a great budget, great sailors, a lot of good technicians, but with, with problems. Oh, okay, guys, it's probably going to be go. Copy that. More down. <laughs> We've got to get better. Uh, we've got a great team and we're going to fight hard. We're not going to give up on any of this. And uh, I think we should expect some, some more close races to come. American Magic, uh, on the contrary, uh, had been the team with most of the hours in the water. Sorry. 
so we knew that they were uh, a solid, uh, solid team. Um, and uh, when they show up here with both two, uh, and they were showing also a lot of speed, uh, we were very worried about that team. I think uh, even if we're just three teams, it was going to be a very hard series for us. I think Patriots are a good boat all the way through the range, so our um, approach and mentality is just to stay consistent, stay true to the process that we have racing the boat and uh, allow that to happen. These machines are the most exciting boat I've ever seen in my life. These boats are uh, next level. There is nothing like that in the, in the planet at the moment. Here we go. Fast mode, yeah. Yeah, fast mode. I mean, when you're racing, you don't have time for emotion. You just focus full on. You got the adrenaline push you up. When you see the thing from outside, it's pretty tough because obviously from outside it's easy to see, no, if you are making mistake or not because you you have a different perspective. The AC75 has taken the America's Cup into new territory. It's high octane, high velocity, high stakes. They call this the pinnacle of sailing for good reason. All America's Cup editions, you know, are memorable for their own reasons, but this one's been pretty extraordinary. I mean, first of all, the machines blowing everybody away. I'll never forget the first day on the water, just seeing them whizzing by. So here we go, three years, and the wait is over as a new entry is written in the America's Cup storybook. The AC-36 already has the attention of sailing fans around the world. The next three months are going to change the game forever. You know, just wondering how on earth they were even going to race these things. Um, they're extraordinary and so visual so fast and visual and so technical. And for me, you know, they made it. Uh, and also just sort of watching the sailors evolve, having to learn how to sail something that was just so, so difficult, so far away from the norm in the sport, made this edition extraordinary. Oh, the course right. Yeah, I, I think it's just all the way from a spectator's point of view, the speeds look really impressive. You know, you, you look at the numbers and um, when boats are doing over 40 knots of outright speed upwind, um, that's impressive. You know, the, the way they achieve that with the design of the boat, the amount of riding moment they can create with that foil hanging out to leeward, the aerodynamics of the platform, the fact everyone's wearing not just the helmets but the full goggles because you probably couldn't see at that speed upwind with the amount of wind in your face. Um, it made a pretty cool spectacle. Watching him. Yeah, got him. He's going straight. Yeah. Is he a danger on the low? No danger. Doesn't really look much more down at the moment. Not being good. Protest. I don't know, mate. Copy. Sorry about that. He's hacking underneath. Copy. It's going to be a uh, split attack. Right. Right hand turn. Copy. Right. This sport has turned into a balancing act. Pressure's up here. 15s. You're on a sawhorse, you know, and that's what sailing has become, is living on a sawhorse and hoping the person on the other end isn't too skinny or too heavy, you know, so you go flying off. It's a different world, it's a different show. This is, this is not my, my father's, my grandfather's uh, sport anymore. This is, this, is my, this is our kids' and our grandkids' sport. It's official. But in this sporting arena, the road to glory is never easy. December 2020, the world gets its first look at the AC-75 in race mode. 75 foot foiling monoholes in racing like you have never seen before. Let's go racing, everybody. Just fantastic action right out of the blocks. It was also a chance for all four teams to size up the opposition. Happy right turn, please. Two, one, four down. 10 seconds to attack. My right, my drop. Strengths and weaknesses were put on show for all to see. The World Series event, to me, was the best of the Americas Cup. Happy to get rid of you, 
The problem with these new foiling generations of boats, or these boats that are incredibly difficult to sail, is that the sailors always figure it out. And when they figure it out, they become perfect. They come out of the water, the, the tip of the lured foil is this far out of the water all the time, and they never skid, and they never smash and crash and go sideways or do anything weird and dumb. As a commentator, the more mistakes, the better. So the World Series was, wow, did you see that? Wow, one bad tack by the Americans. Protest said no penalty. Wow, amazing. Moment of holding your breath for American magic. Wow. They haven't gone over, but wow, how about that? We use the word wow, it seemed. I use the word wow every other sentence in the World Series because something bizarre was happening, whether it was, you know, the, the Brits not being able to get out or everybody else flying too high or near misses and weird starts because nobody could get in on time. That's the ultimate. For those who had written the rule, imagined and dreamed of racing the world's fastest monohull, this was a moment of realization, a moment to be cherished. No, it's, it's just incredible the speed, you know, and I think to add to that, how quickly they can maneuver, you know, we really um, enjoy selling these bikes. The AC75 definitely lives up to, to my expectations. I think to a lot of people's credit, it's an absolutely unbelievable boat to sail. Personally, you know, extremely proud of the fact that those dreams, if you like, and those sketches on pieces of paper after Bermuda, when we were looking at the initial concepts, um, you know, came to fruition um, in the way and the shape and the form that they have. And to, to actually sail on the boat, you know, and, and actually just have them going faster and faster and faster and be going upwind and downwind at the speeds that we're doing, but in a racing environment, neck to neck with your opponent is, is something that's probably a lot of people have never ever dreamt about. And there was a lot of people that knocked the boats when they first came out, saying that they weren't gonna be very good and they were gonna be this and they were gonna be that. But, you know, I think they've all probably eaten their words pretty humbly. Looks okay, well better. Yeah. I think the boat definitely lived up to or exceeded the expectations even, especially in terms of speed. You know, I think we were all pretty blown away by the performance that these boats can, can do across a wind range. And, yeah, definitely through the, the cup regatta we never actually really saw over about 12 knots. So, you know, seeing what these boats can do in, you know, 15 or 18 knots is a whole nother level again. Like they're a pretty uh, incredible bits of equipment. You know, for us it would have been pretty cool to have at least one race in that upper end of the wind strength. Uh, you know, I think people would have been, you know, blown away by how quick these boats really do go on that, that wind speed and you know, I feel like, um, yeah, our boat in particular was pretty strong in that kind of, you know, 12 up. Top speed yesterday in 12 knots of breeze was 49.1 knots. Emirates Team New Zealand. Unbelievable. It's probably one of the only regrets of, uh, of the whole regatta was the fact that we didn't get any decent breeze, you know, for the, for the whole America's Cup event. We were, we were all really hoping to, to sail in a sort of a 15 or 20 knot sort of a day where we could really you know, let the boats rumble and, and get into it. But um, that just didn't happen. But they always say you've got to save something for next time. For one team, the early Prada America's Cup World Series was an event best forgotten. Uh, we have a problem on board Ineos. Some sort of foil problem, no question about it. A retirement from Ineos Team UK who have had a, a less than satisfactory day. Well, we tried to race, <laughs> but we didn't really have control of the boat all day. And okay. unfortunately, we got around the first one with Mark and <laughs> tried to jive and the boat just wasn't operating. So, challenging day. Ineos Team UK were in trouble and struggled to even finish a race. Oh boy. Oh, splash down by Ineos Team UK. They splash down. They there, didn't they? Ineos, Sir Ben Ainsley, you know, he so wants to win that cup for Great Britain, to bring it back to the place where it all started 170 years ago. I think the boat was full of talent, not just the boat behind the scenes as well, the, you know, the whole design and shore side of it. And I think they were pretty surprised when they got here, having not had any races. They, they got here and they got out in the water and they could finally compare themselves with everyone else, that they were behind the curve. And from that moment, almost from the first sailing here, it was a, a pretty, a mountain to climb, really, to be competitive. Yeah, we're done. Tough one, boys. 
Ineos Team UK were down, but not out. You will never see competitor athletes ever quit, and this is the proof of it right here. After you, lads. We're struggling down the range, particularly um, uh, in, the slow, in the slow boat speeds. And uh, so we want to make some, you know, clearly you want to make some changes. Four weeks later, when the America's Cup round robin series commenced, the battling Brits hit back. It looks a, a different boat to what we're used to seeing. They are flying and they are confident and sailing their, their own race. Ineos Team UK win Prada Cup race one and get the first points on the board. Awesome job, guys. Well done, guys. Nice work, guys. Ineos, I think, were sort of one of those almost success stories, if you like, throughout the campaign in, in the fact that they were so off the pace early on, um, you know, with, with some of their sort of, I guess, foil decisions that they'd made, um, and maybe not the decisions themselves, but possibly just the execution of how some of those foil componentries were put together. They fixed those, and all of a sudden they went from, you know, zero to hero pretty much overnight. It looks like Ineos is going quite quick, doesn't it? If anyone thought Ineos was going to have trouble, think again, it truly is game on in the Prada Cup. This is a really, really big moment for this whole program and all the effort that's gone into getting this boat competitive. Taking it right to the limit, three from three. Well, the sailing team did a great job today. They had a really, really good day against two top competitors in fantastic conditions, like you said. So we're just uh, very happy to have finally won a few races and trying to get the team back on track. And that was just unbelievable to watch and, and the transformation of, of the vibe of the whole event and, and not only seeing their team, um, it, it was incredible. It was absolutely amazing. And for them to then get out and mix it up and race extremely well against Lira Rossa and also the Americans was, was, was fantastic. And we were all just blown away, sitting back in our chairs, just going, wow, this is epic. And, you know, hats off to those guys. They, they dug deep as a group. Um, ben and the team, you know, did a brilliant job. Look at that drive by Ineos Team UK. Very nice drive. They've taken the lead here. Nice game by Ineos. For Ineos Team UK, they go 4-0 and oh in the Prada Cup Challenger Series. Seeing them, and that, that sour west breeze picking a few shifts and, uh, you know, winning a, a whole heap of races um, back to back was something that was, you know, definitely pretty cool and I think, you know, reminded everyone how close these boats really are and how if someone sails better than someone else or someone makes a little breakthrough, then they will win races and they will be able to win series. So. You know, definitely reinforced for us that we needed to keep putting our best foot forward and keep making sure we were improving everything we could. In a fight for survival, Ineos Team UK came back from the brink, took out the round robin series, got a free pass to the Prada Cup final and kept their America's Cup dreams alive. Aggressive sailing there by Luna Rossa. Can Ineos get inside? Ineos Team UK, top gate first mark. Really, there's nothing in this. There's nothing, there's in, nothing it. in this. There's nothing in this. They're trying to set them up on a port starboard. Oh, it's Ineos Team UK, cross the line. <laughs> that was one for the fans, huh? It's a great moment for the team because we've obviously had a tough start, so I'm incredibly proud of everyone. You know, win or lose, that was one of the best races you would want to see in, in sailing. I, I thought it was a fantastic showcase for the sport. I knew the potential of Ineos, and I've been around enough cups to know that you can achieve a lot in a short period of time. But I felt then, pre-Christmas, Ben didn't know if it was solvable, and really it was a mark, the caliber of the people he'd hired and the passion to deliver on the racetrack that that brought them back. And actually, when they did come back, boy, they came back with a punch. You know, they won, they won the initial series. They looked great. And actually, you know, we thought they were within, they had a great chance of being the challenger. Ineos Team UK's comeback was complete, but American Magic was about to face a far greater challenge. And we are underway. 
the final race in round robin phase two. This is race number three. We're on board American Magic, trailing Luna Rossa out of the gate. It's day three of the Prada Cup round robin series, and the 36th America's Cup was about to take a dramatic turn. Heading towards the top gate for the last time, 35 knots, American Magic. This will be a huge weight off the shoulders. Hunting their first win, American Magic held the lead going into the final leg. Turned quickly, was hit by a sudden gust. The entire six and a half tons of race yacht was sent airborne. Whoa, oh, hang on. Here. American Magic! <laughs> My and goodness! They are over. We'll never forget uh, the American Magic crash. You know, that those moments are hard for me because we have a solemn vow inside, uh, inside the TV production studio and inside of our booth is that we don't talk until we can count all the heads. Chase boats now getting to the attention of the American Magic crew. So when that boat just took off, going, you know, 40-something knots, you know, 55, 55 miles an hour or something like that, uh, that was like, you know, heart, heart in mouth uh, moment. So uh, Leon and I both on the button within two seconds, you know, Leon, do you see the heads? We got to start counting heads. And he's like, count heads, don't say a word till we count heads. And, and fortunately, uh, one, I think it was the low helicopter shot came around and just at that time, one last helmet and we're counting. I'm like, everybody's sure there's 11 on this boat. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. We counted all 11 people. So it looked like all people were accounted for, all 11 crew members. And as soon as that was done and the boat popped up and all of a sudden it's, it, we only were on the air for about 20 more seconds after the boat popped up. And I just remember saying out loud, oh my God. Oh my God, the boat turned sideways. I remember they were on my side and capsizing and first thing was saying to my crew, okay, now we have to get the boat to the finish line. Uh, stop pushing this hard. The race is abandoned when one boat capsizes. You can always drop the board after, so be oh, generous on that. And obviously I was thinking about them, uh, of, ho hoping that everybody was safe. That was, that's the first thing. The horror of the capsize was relived and retold by American Magic skipper Terry Hutchinson. 40 seconds before the top mark, we're sailing along in about 12 knots of wind, and everything's pretty benign. Heading towards the top gate for the last time, 35 knots, American Magic. This will be a huge weight off the shoulders. About 20 seconds before the left turn, you know, breeze comes up to 16, 17, and you can hear the audio on board, and the breeze goes left, so you hear a little bit of, of high pitch from you know, easing the jib. As we go into the maneuver, you know, Dean makes a clear call, left turn. He'll stay to leeward for the bear away. And as we go to bear away, basically you know, about a 23 and a half knot puff dropped down on top of us. And over she went. My, my most vivid memory is, is when I heard Dean say, uh, I've lost the rudder. I basically, you know, I'm clipped into the boat, so I went to eject myself out of the boat, and my, my clip didn't come undone, um, which straight away got my cackles up. And uh, so then I went for the knife, and the cockpit filled up straight away. And it very quickly went from everything's in OK to uh, a high, a pretty high fever from my perspective, as I straight away was underwater and pinned underneath the mainsail. As Sicho went by me, he could see that my head was underwater and, my, and that I was trapped. Cooper grabbed his knife, 
and um, cut the left one and got me out. From there, all four of us popped out from underneath the mainsail and did the head count, and we were all, you know, everybody was safe. You know, very quickly, it became apparent that Patriot was, had suffered some major damage. And when we got her upright, uh, it was clear that there was a hole. And it very quickly went to a, um, a rescue operation of the boat. At the time, it felt like um, you know, we had one air pocket in the boat um, that was keeping her afloat. I think uh, we all thought the boat was going to sink. Racing is a completely different game, no? Because you push the limit of the boat. You don't have fear because you want to win the race. I, I, I think the capsize of, uh, of American Magic has been a consequence of many, uh, it's probably not up to me to say mistake, but. And, and probably it's been a little bit of bad luck because when they decided to bear away, Dino was to leeward, probably didn't see the path coming. But that is sport. I mean, you cannot control everything. It's going to be a hard maneuver. It's going to be a real hard maneuver. Heading counter. Three, two, one. Heading down now. Three, two, one. Heading counter. Three, two, one. Heading counter. Three, two, one. In that situation, the boat, you know, the boat's designed for a certain amount of impact. But having watched and looked at the pictures, I can tell you we were well beyond the threshold. <laughs> Uh, from a team perspective and the, the actual saving of Patriot, you know, we had pumps on the water, we have uh, floats on the water, we have basically everything you need um, to keep the boat uh, from sinking. We ended up with 16 pumps in the boat. We put six of our pumps in the boat. Uh, it wasn't enough. We attached all of our marks to the bow and to the stern of the boat, and that would have kept the that would have kept her, you know, had she actually gone underneath the surface, I mean, well, she was, but had she gone completely under, it would have, the boat would have floated, you know, a meter below the surface with everything that we had. You know, we received some incredible support from the New Zealand authorities, from the fire and rescue. You know, we received incredible support from, you know, truly unbelievable support from Team New Zealand, from Inos and Luna Rosa. We knew, we knew when you sailed with this boat, like the AC-72 or the 75, you could flip over with this boat because they are on the limit most of the time. And you know it's gonna happen, but you cannot think that too much when you're sailing because otherwise you're making the mistake because you pull the brake, you know? And uh, I think the big message and the big thing we learned is uh, the community was there when the, when the problem happened and all the team I think seeing all the team, uh, the sailor, the short team of all the team being involved and trying to rescue a boat which was almost sunk, I think it was, uh, it's been a great image for our sport and for the sport in general, no? Mm. It was hard because, you know, we have, three years invested into, um, into this boat. And we got back to shore, um, you know, we had a good plan to get the rig out, to get the boat out of the water, and we had a good team meeting inside the shed. And, and then I think one of the strengths of American Magic and of our team as a whole is the people. And from here on out, you know, we just allowed the people to do their jobs. And at the end of this weekend, Prada, who has challenged for the America's Cup a record five times, and New York Yacht Club, who held the America's Cup for 132 straight years, one of them's going home. So Patriot's been, uh, she's coming back to life. They're turning the boat on, and really the heartbeat of the boat is going again, which is really exciting. American Magic pulled off the impossible. They got back in the water, but it was a tough watch, seeing the rebuilt Patriot struggle after that horrendous capsize. There's nothing uh, uh, that gets you going more than getting your teeth kicked in. American Magic is in a very vulnerable spot right now, very vulnerable. Oh, 
a big crash there for the American team. Hard in the water. I think something might be wrong with the boat. Was there a chance that American Magic was ever going to be the same again? Probably not. I, I think there were other flaws in their program that kind of came to light. You can't blame it all on flipping the boat over. Luna Rosso go 2 and 0 oh against Patriot. Well, the message to the team is simple. On board racing, we have to you know, understand the mistakes that we made and improve upon them. This is a tough day for this team. In the Christmas series, we probably saw too good a boat, and everybody else knew where the bar was and knew what to exceed. And when the boat was getting fixed, they didn't get faster. Matter of fact, they probably took a slight edge, uh, a slight step backwards. So because of that, um, the other two just went blowing by. It wasn't, wasn't close anymore. Luna, Rossa, Prada, Pirelli are in the box seat. They only need two more wins, and they go straight through to the Prada Cup final. We opened the door, and they just walked right through and took the opportunity presented. Yep, man, you're going speed. He's too slow. I'm a firm believer in you are what your record says you are. And at the end of the day, they got to really be looking at the mirror as to how the whole program went together, frankly, because they never won a race when it counted. Whoa! Skidding sideways, skidding, skidding hard sideways. Nobody wants to lose, uh, but this is a sport, and uh, it's, it's not about uh, how you lose, it's about how you react. Smooth as silk today for the Italians. The Italians swept the Americans away. Form, momentum, confidence was on their side. They were about to let the sailing world know they'd come of age. Now Ineos, boys. We are sniffing revenge on the Ineos. Well, it's payback time. We are those British guys from the Round Robins. Luna Rosso Prada Pirelli had spent 21 years chasing the America's Cup. They wanted the Prada Cup, the silverware that bore their name, and they weren't about to let anyone ruin the party. Luna Rossa in command from the go. Race eight, Prada Cup final. Once Luna Rosa gets away, they just tend to extend. We are one length ahead of us. He's got options here in this right hand cross at the moment. Copy that. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli went into the Prada Cup final as underdogs and ended up sailing like champions. Luna Rossa will make the match and be the official challenger for the America's Cup and take on Emirates Team New Zealand. They swept away Ineos Team UK, won the Prada Cup and were determined to secure a place in sporting folklore against Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, now you're really seeing the Italian emotion and passion of trying to get him to hold it in until we got to this point. But now, good to see it. The right challenger definitely got through. They just got smooth and better and fast enough. And a lot of you guys sitting in this room were writing us off, talking up a lot of people, but us. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to go. The main event's starting. So here we go, the match, race one. The first to seven race wins will hold the old mug aloft. A lot of speculation that the challengers, Luna Rosa, uh, might be a little more race hardened and ready for this type of action. But uh, here we go. Now we get to find out. Luna Rosa had a really good chance. Um, you know, considering what we all thought and how they might have been off the pace, the conditions fell into their lap, really. They motored that boat for sub 10 knots. Pretty good decision when you, you look at the averages for March, it's generally lighter. And, and that week of light northeasters that we had just could not have suited Luna Rossa any better. Race one of the 36th America's Cup match. No more secrets, it's all out in the open. Coming up, coming up. Stephen, this is the moment that every America's Cup cycle ha waits for anxiously. That first lineup, give the first bit of the advantage to the Emirates Team New Zealand, but it's speed and pace. Actually, she could be a little off here. Can we flag this, Kekka? Yes. It will. It's a very aggressive move there from Luna Rossi. Going for the luff, really trying to get a penalty there. 
On a day of light and inconsistent wins, the two teams' performances followed suit. My first inclination here is this is not a runaway train for the Kiwis right now. Happy to go straight in, please, sure. Yeah, for sure. Peter Burling's men in black drew first blood. And Emirates Team New Zealand, the defender, get first points in the opening race of the match for the 36th America's Cup. Getting out and getting a, a win on the board is something that's obviously um, very pleasing because there's you know, so much talk about you know, the lack of racing we'd had going into it and how hard that would be for us as a team. And we definitely took a lot of positives away from that. And we're a go on race number two of the match. Jimmy Spithill called that. Let's match right away. So he's right smack into match race mode. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. But a slick Italian team bounced back and drew level on day one. Ho, ho, ho. That's a good one, Jimmy. Nice one. You can do this. When we won uh, our first race and the score was 1 1, I went back and uh, I was almost shaking. I said, oh, this is really possible. People would say that we would have lost by minutes, that Team New Zealand was gonna go like 55 knots around the course. And uh, until that day, we didn't knew. And uh, we came back with a 1-1 on conditions that should have been an easy win for Team New Zealand. I was like, I was almost shaking. I was like, wow, we can really maybe win the cup. And uh, uh, just having, one chance of winning for me was a big thing. Alarm clocks just went off all over Italy. Get out of bed and let's watch some sailboat racing. We are go. Race three of the match in the 36th America's Cup. Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli carrying on from race number two and they will lead Emirates team at New Zealand around the mark. Come on, boys. Well done. Yeah, awesome. Good race, boys. Good race. Oh, he's a uh, big After two days of racing, we were none the wiser who had the upper hand. Scorecard now. Emirates Team New Zealand 2, Luna Rossa 2. Day two, two all. The regatta starts on day three. We, we went into day three, you know, basically, you know, even, even scores. And, you know, day two, I think, really showcased, you know, how, you know, little racing we'd done, but also how we needed to get our heads in the game from a racing sense to be able to compete against these guys who were racing really well and knew their boat very well. So we were still, at that point in time, I think, very much on the back foot. It was nice, it was nice because uh, you could feel the atmosphere uh, here in Auckland, no? all the people start thinking and questioning uh, who would have the, have the, the, the fastest boat uh, on the starting line. Of course, uh, we had the same question in our mind too, and uh, I think that's the beauty of the America's Cup, no? They call Emirates Team New Zealand the team of five million, and it feels like most of that team have turned up to show their support about to complete the halfway stage in this fifth race of the America's Cup match in front of a magnificent spectator fleet. And it's all Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli at the moment. It was always nice because uh, he gave us uh, believingness, no, in the, in the fact, well, uh, a dream could come in true. And just when Emirates Team New Zealand needed to execute a good start, they've done the job. At the end of day three, Emirates Team New Zealand and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli were still deadlocked. I loved the battle in the first few days when we were just going blow for blow. Uh, we weren't doing some things, um, you know, exactly how we, sh we should have, and they, they came out firing and they really took it to us. What is really hurt the most is the fact we probably throw two races in the bin on the first three days. And that is really what it make me unhappy. And no one knows uh, what could happen if you, you're you gonna be ahead for two after three days. And uh, because, uh, I mean, pressure go completely in one way, with five million of people start to say, oh, well, this guy, they're not that good. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And, uh, and that that is the thing I will uh, regret the most, you know, because, uh, it's something which is there, and it will stay there forever, unfortunately. 
Race seven of the America's Cup match. We're at three all. Can anyone make a big move today? We are faster than I am. Luna Rossa were over five knots faster at their gun, and look at this, they're starting to roll over them. Clear win for Luna Rossa in that start. And there you have it, folks. A lead change. Emirates Team New Zealand win race number seven, and they take a lead. They go up 4-3 when it matters. I guess for us, when we're the ones in the moment and the ones in control, you may be uh, a little bit less stressed, which is probably strange for people to hear, but we knew where we were at. We knew we were building into it nicely, and we'd made mistakes, and they'd beaten us outright for that, and deservingly so. They were pretty strong, and, and that's what you want it race against, right? You want to race against people that have worked hard for it and have come prepared and their boat was getting faster all the time. And It's getting super soft, Nathan, as I'm talking. I see Everest Team New Zealand touchdown in that critical dive of Prada's hip and Prada are sailing away in pressure. Everest Team New Zealand are stuck in the water right now. Huge games to Prada. Luna Ross are going just fine in the pressure they have, but they've got to go back through that light wind. There we go, Emirates Team New Zealand now up and foiling, so clearly there's enough breeze out there to get up and go, but you've got to find those puffs, and um, this is a monster of a lead at the moment. Oh, here it comes. This has turned into a full-blown disaster for this boat. Kiwis on the foils, chewing up ground as we speak. If they stick this tack and foil around the windward gate, there will be a lead change. And I think they've nailed it, guys. Still 20 knots of boat speed. They're foiling. Emirates Team New Zealand have come from behind and are the first team to win two races in a single day. They lead 5-3. I think having them there as a formidable opponent and us having to respond to that is the exact place we want to be. Finally, one team has a clean advantage. Sorry for the people around the country that were starting to uh, have heart attacks. Emirates Team New Zealand had finally broken the deadlock and secured a two-race lead over Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. We have a start in race nine of the America's Cup match. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, Emirates Team New Zealand, and this is a big race. It's a full boat speed race still here. As bad at predicting as we were, I think the finals actually kind of lived up to predictions in a way because we predicted race rust, which the Kiwis had. We predicted a really sharp outfit with the Italians, which they had. We're going to sail them off the course. They have every right to sail them off the course right now. Aggressive match racing by Luna Rossa. Because they're sailing better than the Kiwis are right now. But man, oh man, it looks like it, it just kind of has this feeling that there's some jets that we haven't seen before, and these guys are going to figure it out. A good spot to come back up here, Killer. Yeah. coming here in three. Has the breeze. Look at that. There's a right hand shift, and it looks like Team New Zealand have taken the lead. Emirates Team New Zealand are one step closer to winning the America's Cup. A very wise man and a good friend of mine uh, said once uh, Imagine what our story would be if they lose from here. The Italians were defiant, but the team of five million were just as confident. One, it's down. on race 10 of the America's Cup match 2021. One. Key moment in the race. They wanted the right hard there. Great call by the Kiwis. Got the shift and the pressure. Good game to Luna Rossa. I think Peter Burling is saying to his boys, let's shut the race down. Let's not give him a chance to get back into this. 
The Kiwis have gotten better, they've gotten a race tougher, and the faster boat is about to win the America's Cup. Emirates Team New Zealand do it again in a new class of boat that proves Kiwis can fly. The final score, seven races to three. The America's Cup was, and still is, New Zealand's Cup. It was an amazing feeling. I mean, the reception back here at the Viaduct, the flotilla on the way in, was like nothing we could have imagined, I guess. When the Warriors came to lead us over the bridge to take us to the prize giving, it was, that was amazing. Yeah, seeing the support we had from the Kiwi public was yeah, hard to beat and just those memories will be with us forever. Obviously throughout the whole event, you know, the amount of messages of support we were getting from, felt like everyone in New Zealand. It's just uh, incredible to know that, you know, what you're doing is, is so special for so many people and, you know, also that so many people have put in so much hard work to, to get us to that point, so, you know, to be able to actually I suppose repay that and, and win the thing um, is a, a pretty incredible feeling. <laughs> Bermuda or this one? Um, oh, wow, it's hard to, hard to answer that question. Both extremely, extremely special. Pick a difference. This, you've, you've gone in as a defender. Um, you've had a fantastic group, a, an amazing team, a, a really a brilliantly run campaign. You've sailed a boat that you were part of dreaming about and, and, and putting together and extremely special as well. So yeah, if I don't ever sail another yacht ever again, you know, you could you could you could go away feeling pretty pretty satisfied, that's for sure. The fastest, most intriguing, most dramatic America's Cup had come to an end. But there's a new challenge on the horizon. The journey to the 37th America's Cup has only just begun. To win it and defend it on home waters is pretty incredible, but to obviously keep winning it, keep it here, would be a pretty incredible goal also. Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you by Prada.